So I'm going to talk a little bit about the height of the table that's appropriate for wedging. So this is actually like a really great height for me. Um, so like my waist is right here and I can lean into this. I'm bending my leg a little bit, but I can lean into this and wedge. But if you were, if you were like really tall, which I'm not, but if you were and you were leaning down on this, this would be really bad for your back. Okay. Um, and then if you, also, if you were short, um, and you were like trying to wedge like this, this wouldn't be appropriate. So you just need to make sure that you have the right height. We're gonna wedge some clay now. So I have this bag of clay. It's pretty moist and I think like the perfect consistency to start wedging it up now. So I'm gonna remove a chunk. Um, you know, something that fits in my hands like this, that's comfortable to wedge. And if you're, if you're new to wedging, then a smaller amount of clay is better, maybe even this big um, to start. So I am working on the concrete board and it's a great surface and I really like wedging on this, but it is so absorbent that sometimes it will dry the clay out quicker than I want it to be dried out. And so I usually always have a water bottle around that I'll just mist my surface with. There we go. So I'm not soaking it, I'm just misting. And I have, a, I have a towel over here because I don't like my hands to be wet when I'm wedging. I want them to be dry. So the reason why it's a little bit moist is because if the clay is wet and I throw it down onto the board and the board's really dry, it's going to um, absorb all the moisture and it will like stick. And so I'm going to just work this a little bit. And now I'm going to throw it down and just kind of pound it, working it into a square. And since I don't know, you know, who was using this last and uh, how many air bubbles are in here, this is just a way to kind of get the clay to come together uh, before I start wedging. So you're going to use both hands on the clay. You're going to pull it towards you and you're going to push. And you need to make sure you pull again and push. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll just keep pushing and it'll kind of like push this patty out. But you need to make sure your hands are back and then they're pulling and pushing like this motion. So I'm going to go ahead and here show you. So you can see I kind of like flip it up and then reach down like this. And then what will happen is you'll start to get, I'm not actually sure if this looks like a ram's head, but we just say that it does. So we'll start to get this shape. So I'm pushing really hard here actually. And then the rest of my hands are just kind of gently working, helping me get the, the shape. So that's the process. Just pull it towards you and push. What you don't want to do, I'm just going to show you, is like continue to just push because what you'll see what will happen is I'm just going to get this like flattened piece and that's really difficult to work with. So if you get this or if students get this shape, um, it's best to just kind of toss this down a couple more times and then just restart if it gets too flat. And if you notice that your board starts getting dry, I like to kind of just move around to different spots. And you can always stop and mist it again. Now I have this shape and I have to figure out like how to deal with both of these sides where I'm like afraid I might get some air bubbles. And so usually I just am going to like pat them in like that and then just kind of roll this up. I'm going to take my wire tool and I'm going to check it for air bubbles. I usually check right in the middle. There we go. I don't see anything. Um, so I'll just pound this back together. And then again, I'll usually do this at least one more time just to make sure.